Hello students, in today's video, we will study pharmacology of uh, anti-malarial drugs, a complete overview. Now, in order to understand pharmacology of uh, anti-malarial drugs, it is essential to quickly review pathogenesis and life cycle of malarial parasite. Now, malaria is an acute febrile disease and is characterized by sudden onset of high-grade fever. It is caused by the parasite Plasmodium. Now, there are hundreds of the species of Plasmodium, but in human, malaria is produced by five species. Plasmodium falciparum, Plasmodium vivax, Plasmodium ovale, Plasmodium malariae and Plasmodium nolasi. Now, Plasmodium falciparum is the deadliest of all and if it is not treated adequately, it leads to severe complicated malaria. Now, malaria is transmitted from one person to another person through the bite of an infected female Anopheles mosquito. Now, when this infected mosquito bites a human, sporozoites in the saliva of mosquito are released in the human blood. Now, these sporozoites produce malaria. Now, very important to know that these sporozoids are a form of plasmodium parasites. Now, let's understand symptoms of malaria. Now, individual with malaria feels very sick. Now, people with malaria experience periodic cycles of shaking chills, that is excessive cold and shivering stage, followed by high-grade fever with severe headache. Now, this fever is followed by excessive sweating and the body temperature comes down to normal. Now, at this time, the patient feels better. Now, other symptoms include uh, extreme fatigue, nausea and vomiting, shortness of breath, then uh, body aches, that is aches and pains all over the body like muscle pain, joint pain, backache and enlargement of spleen. Malaria should be treated as soon as possible. Untreated or inadequately treated malaria uh, can lead to complicated malaria. Now here the infection can spread to the brain causing cerebral malaria and excessive rupture of RBCs can cause severe anemia. Now multiplication of malarial parasite in the liver can cause liver dysfunction then renal, renal failure can also occur. Now, this organ failure can be fatal and self-treatment of malaria is highly discouraged. Uh, now, let's understand a uh, life cycle of malarial parasite that is the uh, plasmodium in men and uh, therapeutic classification of uh, anti-malarial drugs. Now, when an infected mosquito bites, it uh, releases sporozoites in human blood. Now, sporozoites are a form of plasmodium. These sporozoites multiply in the liver to produce hypnozoites and merozoites. Now, hypno refers to sleeping state. So, hypnozoites is a dormant form of plasmodium which can remain dormant for many years. Now, hypnozoites can cause relapse and individual gets malaria if they are activated. Now, hypnozoites are produced only in malaria due to plasmodium vivax and plasmodium ovale. Now, very important, only one, only one anti-malarial drug that is a primaquine is the hypnozoitocidal. So, this drug kills hypnozoites. So, primaquine is the only drug that prevent relapse of Plasmodium vivax and Plasmodium ovale malaria. Now, multiplication of sporozoites in liver to produce hypnozoites is called as uh, exoerythrocytic cytogony. Now, cytogony refers to the multiplication of sporozoites. Now, besides uh, hypnozoites, sporozoites multiply to produce merozoites. And this cycle is called as pre-erythrocytic cytogony. Now, these merozoites infect RBC. They multiply in the RBC. And while 
their multiplication these merozoites transform into different forms like uh, trophozoites uh, cygoids and exponential multiplication of merozoites can cause rupture of rbc and very important rupture of rbc produces symptoms of malaria that is chills fever and sweating now some uh, parasites uh, or plasmodium in the rbc uh, form male and female gametes and the process is called as gametogony now a non infected mosquito if uh, bites human and sucks Uh, this blood containing uh, gametes of plasmodium uh, this malarial uh, this uh, mosquito gets infected and now this infected mosquito spreads malaria to the human beings now these drugs are uh, gametocidal uh, so these drugs reduce or prevent transmission of uh, malaria by killing the parasitic uh, gametes Uh, so these drugs are artemisinins then uh, proguanil uh, primaquine uh, now very important uh, the process of uh, merozoites multiplication in rbc is uh, termed as erythrocytic cytogony now drugs that kill merozoites during their multiplication in rbc are termed as erythrocytic cytogenicides now these drugs are used for the clinical cure of malaria now these drugs kill parasite in the blood now a uh, very effective and highly efficacious anti malarials are artemisinin then uh, chloroquine quinine mefloquine then uh, halofentrine uh, lumifentrine and atovaquone now artemisinin derivatives are derived from the plant these are highly effective and these are used for the treatment of plasmodium falciparum malaria then chloroquine again a very effective drug uh, it is used for the treatment of plasmodium vivax plasmodium ovale and plasmodium malaria now very important to understand that the most of the uh, uh, strains of plasmodium falciparum are resistant to chloroquine then quinine again a very effective drug uh, but it is less effective compared to chloroquine so uh, quinine is uh, less effective but it is more toxic than chloroquine and therefore uh, it is uh, used in the treatment of chloroquine and multi drug resistant plasmodium falciparum malaria then mefloquine Uh, is highly toxic so its use is restricted and it is used in multi drug resistant plasmodium falciparum malaria then uh, lumifentrine then halofentrine and atovaquone are used when uh, uh, alternatives other alternatives are not available then low efficacy erythrocytic cytogenicides are proguanil pyrimethamine sulfonamides tetracycline and clindamycin now these drugs are used in combination with other anti malarials now after treat, uh, after treatment for prevention of malaria two types of uh, prophylactic anti malarials are used uh, first is the causal prophylactic and the second is the uh, suppressive prophylactics now causal prophylactics uh, these are the drugs that target pre erythrocytic phase of plasmodium in the liver so these drugs uh, destroy parasite in the liver and prevent infection of rbc so the malaria does not occur now the drugs are primaquine and proguanil now uh, important to understand that uh, primaquine is not used uh, in prophylaxis because of its toxicity and uh, proguanil is also not used for the prophylaxis then uh, uh, second type of preventive drugs are the suppressive prophylactics now these drugs attack uh, erythrocytic cytogony and they suppress the attack of malarial fever now the drugs in this category are chloroquine mefloquine doxycycline uh, these are the drugs that are used however proguanil is not used for the uh, prophylactic purpose 
So, therapeutic classification of uh, anti-malarial drugs consists of uh, five types of drugs. Uh, for the clinical use, uh, erythrocytic cyjontisoids are used uh, and these drugs they kill the parasite in blood. Then uh, gametocidal drugs, they kill plasmodium gametes and they prevent infection of mosquito and the spread of malaria by mosquito is reduced or completely prevented. Then uh, hypnozoitocidals, uh, these drugs kill hypnozoids and they prevent relapse of plasmodium vivax and plasmodium ovale malaria. Then causal prophylactics, they prevent malaria by killing parasite in the liver. So parasite does not reach RBC. Then uh, suppressive prophylactics, they suppress the attack of malaria. So this is the th therapeutic classification of uh, anti-malarial drugs. Now let's understand chemical classification of anti-malarial drugs. Now for amino, uh, quinoline drugs are chloroquine, amodiaquine, then uh, piperaquine. Then eight amino, quinolines drugs are pramaquine then tefino, uh, tefinoquine, then quinoline uh, methanol drug is mafloquine, sincona alkaloids are quinine and quinidine. Now chloroquine, amodiaquine, piperaquine, mefloquine and quinine, they act by same mechanism of action. Now these drugs prevent formation of hemozoin that protects plasmodium from the toxic effect of Heme. Now another drug that is primaquine, it interferes with mitochondrial electron transport chain of the parasite. Now the next class is uh, biguanide, the drug is proguanil, then uh, diamino uh, pyrimidine, the drug is uh, pyrimethamine. Now proguanil and pyrimethamine, they inhibit plasmodiums dihydrofolate reductase enzyme and inhibition of this enzyme inhibits the synthesis of tetrahydrofolate. Now tetrahydrofolate is very essential for the synthesis of uh, DNA. Then uh, sulfonamides also inhibit synthesis of uh, tetrahydrofolate and thus reduce synthesis of DNA by the plasmodium. Now sulfonamides and sulfones include sulfadoxine, then sulfamethopyrazine and depson. Then antibiotics like uh, tetracycline, doxycycline, clindamycin. Now these drugs inhibit protein synthesis. Now next class, a very important class is the sesqui uh, terpine lactons and this include RT mesinin derivatives like uh, RT sunate, then RT methyl then uh, dihydro RT mesinin. Now these drugs are very effective and they're commonly used uh, for the treatment of plasmodium falciparum malaria. Now these drugs produce free radical that uh, destroy the plasmodium. Uh, then amino alcohols include uh, halofentrine and lumifentrine. Now these drugs inhibit nucleic acid and protein synthesis of the parasite. Then uh, nephthyridine uh, class include drug uh, pyronaridine and uh, uh, this, drugs, this drug also prevent formation of hemozoin. Then nephthoquinone, uh, this include drug uh, atovaquinone. Now atovaquinone inhibit mitochondrial electron transport chain of the malarial parasite. So uh, this is the chemical classification of uh, anti-malarial drugs. Now let's study pharmacology of all important commonly used anti-malarial drugs. Now first category of uh, anti-malarial drugs is the four amino quinolines. Now drugs in this category are chloroquine, amodiaquine and piperaquine. Now all these drugs they act by same mechanism of action and they produce similar adverse effects. Now prototype drug is the chloroquine. Now these drugs are erythrocytic cyjonticides and they kill parasite in the blood and therefore they are used in the treatment of malaria. Now let's first understand how the plasmodium grows inside the RBCs. 
Now, plasmodium derives its nutrition by digesting hemoglobin. So, in the acidic food vacuole of the parasite, parasitic lysosomes, they digest hemoglobin and digestion of hemoglobin produces heme and globin. Now, globin is utilized as food by the parasite, while heme is very toxic to the parasite. So, parasite, uh, parasitic enzyme heme polymerase polymerizes this toxic heme to non-toxic hemozoin. And thus, uh, these, uh, this plasmodium, it continue multiplying uh, within the human RBC. Now, chloroquine concentrates more in the infected RBCs. Now, besides this, chloroquine is weakly basic. So, it increases pH of parasitic food vacuole. And first of all, it prevents the breakdown of or degradation of hemoglobin. Secondly, this uh, chloroquine, it forms a complex with a heme. That is the chloroquine heme complex. Now, this heme and chloroquine heme, heme complex prevent the polymerization of heme to hemozoin. So, this hemozoin is not produced in the presence of these drugs. Now, since hemozoin is not produced, this heme is not utilized and this toxic heme, it accumulates in the RBCs. Now, this heme and chloroquine heme complex uh, damage the uh, plasmodium membrane and thereby kill the plasmodium. Now, drugs like chloroquine, uh, amodiaquine, uh, then piperaquine, mafloquine, quinine, they all act by the same mechanism of action. Now, they all prevent formation of hemozoin. So, uh, this is the mechanism of action of these drugs. Now, chloroquine is very effective in the treatment and prophylaxis of malaria due to plasmodium malariae then plasmodium ovale and plasmodium vivax. Now, here very important to understand that uh, plasmodium falciparum has acquired significant resistant to, uh, resistance to chloroquine. And RT mesonin drugs in combination with long-acting erythrocytic cisjontisides are the most preferred treatment for uh, falciparum malaria. Uh, now, let's study adverse effects of uh, chloroquine. Now, the most serious adverse effects of uh, four amino uh, quinolines is the retinopathy. Now, this retinopathy uh, is produced on the long-term use and it can cause reduced visual acuity, that is reduced visual sharpness and impaired color perception. Now, long-term use uh, uh, can cause uh, irreversible autotoxicity. And uh, long-term use can also cause CNS agitation, uh, anxiety and confusion. Other adverse effects are the gastrointestinal discomfort that can cause nausea, vomiting, anorexia and apigastric pain. So, uh, these are the uh, adverse effects of chloroquine. Now, amodiaquine, mechanism of action is uh, uh, like that of chloroquine. And now the uh, indications. Now, amodiaquine uh, is used in the treatment of uh, uncomplicated uh, falciparum malaria and chloroquine resistant plasmodium falciparum malaria. So, this is the pharmacology of uh, chloroquine that is used in the treatment of malaria due to plasmodium vivax, plasmodium ovale and plasmodium malariae. Uh, now, the next uh, drug is quinine. Now, quinine is an alkaloid. Uh, it is obtained from the cinchona bark. Now, like uh, chloroquine, uh, this uh, quinine is also erythrocytic uh, cisjonticide and it, kill, uh, it also kills parasite in the blood. Now, the exact mechanism of action of quinine is not known. Uh, like chloroquine, quinine is also a weak base and uh, it is believed to uh, act like chloroquine. It also inhibits polymerization of heme to hemozoin. Now, as we have learned by now that uh, Plasmodium falciparum has acquired significant resistant resistance to chloroquine. So, most chloroquine and multi-drug resistant Plasmodium falciparum are treated with quinine. 
and it is often used with other uh, anti malarials for complete parasitic removal from the blood now quinine is however less effective and it is more toxic than chloroquine and it also blocks uh, potassium and sodium channels now let's uh, talk about the uh, toxicity of quinine toxicity of quinine is uh, high and it is also dose related now a single large dose or higher doses of quinine uh, can produce a syndrome that is known as the synchronism so uh, it is a group of adverse effects and uh, it causes tinnitus that is ringing in the ears then nausea and vomiting headache mental confusion vertigo difficulty in hearing and visual defects then diarrhea flushing or the redness of skin then marked perspiration that is excessive sweating can also occur now synchronism subsides uh, if the drug is stopped now qt prolongation can also occur with the use of quinine so this is the pharmacology of quinine now another category of uh, anti malarial drugs is the quinoline methanol and the drug that belong to this class is the mefloquine now like chloroquine quinine mefloquine is also a erythrocytic cyjonticide its mechanism of action is not known and it is believed to act like chloroquine it forms complexes with the heme and mefloquine heme complex prevent polymerization of heme to hemozoin however unlike uh, chloroquine which acts inside the acidic food vacuole of the parasite mefloquine acts in the cytoplasm or the cytosol of the parasite now mefloquine is an uh, is an effective anti malarial but uh, its use is restricted due to its uh, potential toxicity now in addition to the treatment of malaria it is also used for prevention or prophylaxis of uh, resistant malaria that is it is used in the prophylaxis of malaria uh, with multiple drug resistant resistance that is uh, malaria that is resistant to a number of drugs uh, it is used in the treatment of uh, multiple drug resistant uh, plasmodium falciparum malaria then it is indicated in chloroquine quinine and uh, doxycycline resistant uh, plasmodium uh, vivax malaria and also in the treatment of uh, malaria due to plasmodium malaria now mefloquine is uh, highly toxic so let's study the adverse effects of mefloquine mefloquine is bitter in the taste now common uh, dose related adverse effects produced by mefloquine are dizziness nausea vomiting diarrhea abdominal pain then sinus bradycardia and qt prolongation now it can also produce dose related neuropsychiatric uh, adverse effects like uh, disturbed sense of balance ataxia strange dreams anxiety hallucinations and rarely convulsions now rare adverse effects of mefloquine are hepatic hematological and cutaneous toxicity and it is contraindicated in uh, first trimester of pregnancy so this is the pharmacology of mefloquine now another anti malarial drug is the primaquine uh, it belongs to the category of 8 amino quinoline now primaquine is pre erythrocytic cyjonticide and therefore it kills plasmodium in the liver and prevent development of merozoites from sporozoites so uh, it is a causal prophylactic and it can prevent occurrence of malaria but uh, it is not used as it is toxic then uh, primaquine is also hypnozoitocidal uh, and it kills Uh, hypnozoites in the liver now as we know hypnozoites are produced only by plasmodium vivax and plasmodium ovae so uh, these hypnozoites they produce the relapse so primaquine is the only anti malarial that can prevent relapse of plasmodium vivax and plasmodium ovae as it completely eradicates hypnozoites however primaquine is a poor erythrocytic cyjonticide 
सो प्राइमाक्वीन इज यूज अलॉन्ग विद क्लोरोक्वीन और अदर ब्लड साइजोंटी साइड्स फॉर कंप्लीट और रेडिकल क्योर ऑफ प्लास्मोडियम वायवेक्स एंड प्लास्मोडियम ओवेल देन इन एडिशन टू दिस प्राइमाक्वीन इज ऑल्सो गैमिटोसाइडल so it kills male and female gametes of the plasmodium and it prevents transmission of malaria so a single dose of primaquine is given with chloroquine or it is given with the artemisinin to kill the gametes and this cuts down or this reduce uh, transmission of malaria to the mosquito so it reduces the spread of disease now let's understand the mechanism of action of primaquine now primaquine produces free radicals and the free radicals induce extensive oxidative damage and uh, uh, these uh, free radicals or uh, this uh, oxidative damage it interferes with the mitochondrial electron transport a uh, chain in the plasmodium parasite so this stops the production of atps now primaquine uh, increases the oxidative stress in human rbcs also so this causes rupture of the rbcs and produces the hemolytic effect now adverse effects of uh, primaquine uh, as we have already uh, discussed primaquine produces free radicals so the oxidant property of primaquine causes uh, hemolytic anemia Uh, it also causes oxidation of hemoglobin that produces uh, methemoglobinemia so oxygen is not supplied to the tissues and therefore it produces cyanosis now especially in uh, those individuals uh, which have uh, glucose 6 phosphate dehydrogenase deficiency uh, in addition to this there is a passage of dark unit uh, dark urine that indicates uh, hemolysis and primaquine is also contraindicated in the uh, pregnancy so this is the pharmacology of primaquine now next category of anti malarials is the biguanide uh, the drug is proguanil now proguanil is low efficacy slow acting erythrocytic sejonti site so it is used for clinical cure of malaria in combination with other drugs now atovaquone is an anti malarial that inhibit mitochondrial electron transport chain of the malarial parasite so combined with atovaquone proguanil can be used for the treatment of multiple drug resistant uh, falciparum malaria then uh, proguanil also inhibits pre erythrocytic stage of plasmodium falciparum in the liver so atovaquone proguanil combination is used as a causal prophylactic that is in the prevention of chloroquine resistant and multiple drug resistant plasmodium falciparum now in addition to this plasmodium gametes exposed to proguanil fail to develop properly in a mosquito thus proguanil also reduces spread or transmission of malaria uh now let's uh, understand mechanism of action of proguanil now for understanding mechanism of action uh, of proguanil uh, here we should know that thf this uh, tetrahydrofolate is essential for the synthesis of nucleotide and we know that nucleotides are the building blocks of dna so uh, non availability of this uh, tetrahydrofolate Uh, prevents the synthesis of dna now besides this an enzyme uh, that is the dihydrofolate reductase regenerates tetrahydrofolate from dihydrofolate so dihydrofolate is converted to tetrahydrofolate in the presence of enzyme dihydrofolate reductase now besides this uh, an enzyme thymidylate synthase is required for the synthesis of thymidine nucleotide that is a deoxythymidine monophosphate one of the building blocks of dna so proguanil is metabolized to cycloguanil cycloguanil is the active metabolite uh, 
Now this cycloguanyl it inhibits the enzyme dihydrofolate reductase. Now inhibition of this enzyme prevents the regeneration of tetrahydrofolate. So folate metabolism is inhibited and because of the non-availability of tetrahydrofolate the nucleotides are not synthesized. Now in addition to this uh, proguanyl also inhibits the enzyme thymidylate synthase that further prevents the synthesis of thymidine nucleotide. Thus, uh, proguanyl inhibits synthesis of DNA and this kills the malarial parasite. Now, side effects of proguanyl. Now, side effects of uh, proguanyl are less compared to chloroquine. Now, adverse effects are mild abdominal symptoms, then vomiting. Uh, then uh, stomatitis, that is the inflammation of oral cavity, then hematuria, rashes and transient loss of hair. So, uh, this is the pharmacology of proguanil. Now, another category of uh, anti-malarial drugs is the diamino uh, pyrimidine. Uh, pyrimethamine and sulfonamide belong to this category. Now, like proguanil, uh, pyrimethamine also inhibits plasmoidal dihydrofolate reductase enzyme which is required for the formation of tetrahydrofolate. Now in addition to this affinity of uh, uh, pyrimethamine for plasmodium uh, dihydrofolate reductase is approximately 2000 times greater than that for the mammalian enzyme. So, uh, this is the mechanism of action of pyrimethamine. It uh, inhibits dihydrofolate reductase and thereby it uh, inhibits the synthesis of tetrahydrofolate. Now, it is a low efficacy erythrocytic cyjonticide and therefore it cannot be used alone for the treatment. It is used in combination with other drugs for the uh, clinical cure of malaria. So pyrimethamine is used along with sulfonamide or dapson for treatment of chloroquine resistant plasmodium falciparum. Then adverse effects, uh, pyrimethamine can cause nausea and vomiting. Then high doses can produce met, uh, megaloblastic anemia and granulocytopenia uh, due to the folate deficiency. Now folate deficiency can be treated by the administration of folinic acid. Now sulfonamides are also low efficacy uh, erythrocytic cyjonticide and therefore they are used in combination. Now plasmodium synthesize its own folic acid and as we know tetrahydrofolate is essential for the synthesis of DNA nucleotides. Now sulfonamides inhibit uh, synthesis of uh, tetrahydrofolate and thus they inhibit synthesis of DNA that kills the plasmodium. So in plasmodium para amino benzoic acid that is PABA combines with pteridine and produce dihydroteroic acid in the presence of enzyme dihydroteroid synthase. Now this dihydroteroic acid combines with glutamate to produce dihydrofolic acid in the presence of dihydro Tyroid synthase enzyme and uh, dihydrofolic acid is further converted to tetrahydrofolic acid by the enzyme dihydrofolate reductase that was inhibited by pyrimethamine. Now sulfonamides they inhibit the enzyme dihydrotyroid synthase. Now inhibition of this enzyme inhibits the synthesis of tetrahydrofolic acid. So since tetrahydrofolic acid is not synthesized uh, nucleotides are not synthesized and therefore there is a reduced synthesis of DNA and that is responsible for the death of plasmodium. So this is the mechanism of action of sulfonamides. Now uh, indication of sulfonamide. Now single dose therapy of uh, sulfonamide pyrimethamine combination is used for the treatment of uh, chloroquine resistant plasmodium falciparum. Then adverse effect, sulfonamide, it is a sulfur drug. It can cause serious adverse effects like uh, exfoliative dermatitis, Steven Johnson syndrome, etc. So this is the pharmacology of uh, pyrimethamine and sulfonamides. Now another very important category of uh, anti-malarials is uh, sesquiterpene lactons. Now artemisinin derivatives, uh, these belong to this uh, class. Now, artemisinin derivatives are derived from the plants. 
and these are used in combination with other anti-malarial drugs and they're highly efficacious in treating uncomplicated as well as severe falciparum malaria so uh, these are more pot these are most potent and uh, rapid blood cyjonticides that is erythrocytic cyjonticides and they rapidly uh, clear parasite from the blood now they kill all forms of parasite in the blood like trophozoids or cyjoins and are highly efficacious now they are active against plasmodium falciparum that is sensitive as well as Plasmodium falciparum resist, resistant to all other malarial drugs. Now besides Plasmodium falciparum, they are also active against all other malarial strains. Now besides this, besides killing the parasite, uh, these uh, drugs, they also uh, uh, they are also lethal to the early gametes. That means they also uh, destroy the early gametes and therefore they reduce uh, infection to the mosquito and thereby they further reduce spread or transmission of malaria. Now RT mesonin is poorly soluble in the water as well as in the oil. So uh, its different derivatives are produced for the clinical use. Uh, now let's understand uh, mechanism of action of uh, RT mesonin. Now look at this, this is the structure of RT mesonin. Now as you can see here, uh, these two oxygen, they form the endoperoxide bridge. Now RT mesonin gets activated in the infected RBCs. Now uh, active metabolite of uh, RT mesonin is uh, dihydro RT mesonin. Now as we know that uh, in the food vacuole of plasmodium, hemoglobin is broken down to heme and globin. Now this heme, it breaks RT mesonin endoperoxide bridge and breakage of this endoperoxide bridge produces the free radical. So these free radicals, they cause lipid peroxidation of a parasitic membrane protein. They also, these free radicals, they also damage endoplasmic reticulum and they cause lysis or they cause a break a breakdown of the parasite. The parasite breaks, the parasite gets destroyed because of the free radicals. Now these free radicals, they can also inhibit uh, plasmodial sarcoplasmic endoplasmic calcium ATPase. So RT mesonin uh, produces free radicals and free radicals are responsible for the destruction of malarial parasite that is the plasmodium. So this is the mechanism of action of RT mesonin. Now these are the commonly used RT mesonin uh, derivatives. Now RT mesonin derivatives are uh, uh, the drugs with the short duration of action and with high uh, recrudescent rate. That means a high rate of relapse. Since they are uh, of short duration of action, they uh, they produce the relapse and therefore they are used in combination with other anti-malarial drugs like mafloquine, uh, amodiaquine, pyrimethamine etc. Now RT sunate is a derivative of RT mesonin. It's a sodium salt as water soluble. It is used orally uh, by intramuscular and intravenous route and half-life is 30 to 60 minutes. Then RT methyl is lipid soluble. Uh, it is used orally and half-life is 3 to 10 hours. Then dihydro RT mesonin is an active metabolite of uh, RT mesonin uh, that is used orally. Now adverse effects. Now these drugs produce mild adverse effects like nausea, vomiting, abdominal pain. Itching is very common with RT uh, mesonin derivatives and uh, they can also produce drug fever. Then rare adverse effects are headache, tinnitus that is ringing in the ear, dizziness, bleeding, then dark, dark urine, ST segment changes, QT prolongation, first degree AV block, then transient reticulopenia and leukopenia. Use, they are used in the treatment of uncomplicated plasmodium falciparum malaria. Uh, now this includes uh, chloroquine resistant uh, plasmodium falciparum malaria as well as uh, sensitive 
uh, sensitive to all the drugs. So sensitive Plasmodium falciparum malaria. Uh, besides uncomplicated malaria, it is also used in the treatment of severe and complicated Plasmodium falciparum malaria where it is given by the parenteral root. So this is the pharmacology of RT mesonin derivatives. So uh, this is all about the pharmacology of uh, anti-malarial drugs, a complete overview. Please note information provided in this video is only for informative purpose. For use of these drugs or for the treatment of malaria, consult your physician. If you find the video useful, kindly like, subscribe and share this video. Thanks for watching this video.